Have you ever wondered what you can make out of 2x4, other than a wall? A while ago, my husband got a 3D printer kit, build your own, including the box. At the time, we just kind of put plywood together with some L brackets, but now I'm going to build him something cool. I started by cutting down 2x4s so lengths were a little more manageable. I needed pieces that were about 2 inches wide and about 3 quarters of an inch thick. And for this I went to the table saw, the planer, the table saw, the planer, the table saw, the planer, slowly squaring up all the sides and eventually getting down to the boards that I need. At that point I started on the lap joints. Of the 6 sides that this box was going to be built of, one side was going to be made out of double French doors, and the other sides were all going to be individual frames put together after the fact. Once these were all cut, I started on the rabbit that I needed in order to insert all my panels. The top pieces, where the face was going to be showing on the outside, was easy. Just run it straight through the table saw. The pieces of the frame that had the lap joint on the back had to have a stop. As you can see here, if I had cut it all the way through, I would have ended up with a little square hole. That just wasn't going to look nice. So I set up a stop and cut a little notch on both ends to give me a start and stop point. Once that was done, I marked out the table saw blade as to where it started and stopped for my rabbit. And then very carefully placed the piece onto the blade and ran it through until I hit the point at which the blade started at the other end. And then did the same thing for the other half of the rabbit. If you're going to do this at home, be careful. The table saw can very quickly turn from your best friend to your worst nightmare. And there we have it. A nice lap joint no little holes, and a rabbit. Next step. At this point, all of my pieces looked like toothpicks with really funny cuts on them. And I discovered that my workbench was the perfect size to be able to clamp and glue and square all my pieces right down to the tabletop. Once this was all done, I was able to move on to my insert pieces. I took more 2x4 pieces, the same dimension as my frame, and cut a rabbit to match both on the sides and on the ends. This will allow them to fit into the frame. Once that was done, my full insanity was realized as I cut all these little pieces completely custom for every single spot, making up a random geometric pattern. Man, did that take a long time. Next day, I filled in all the knot holes from the 2x4, any joints, and gave everything a really good sanding. The goal here was to make it not look like it was made out of 2x4. At this point, the next part of my insanity began. Each individual square was a completely different size from any other square in the box. So every single panel had to be custom cut. There was a lot of time spent on the table saw here. The other part I added was the occasional piece of plexiglass. This would allow us to look inside the box and watch the printer as it was going. With the whole box right now being made out of plywood, we can't see inside it. And it's kind of cool to watch these things. So I very carefully cut all the plexiglass and then really decided the next thing I should build is a table saw sled. This would have been so much easier. But eventually, piece by piece, they all got done. And after what felt like days later, this is what I was left with. The back panel, the bottom that is going to be filled in later, the top with some plexiglass, the side with some plexiglass, and the doors, completely with plexiglass so we can see the whole thing. It took a while, but it's done. Once all the inserts were cut, I went back to just the frames and sanded off anywhere where the lap joints had hung over just a little bit. And you'll see why in a second. Now I'm going to bevel them. 
I didn't want the look of any end grain showing on my box, which is why I made all my frame panels the exact size of the box, not taking out any pieces for overlap. Because every single frame piece is now going to get this bevel. In order to do this safely, I set up a zero clearance fence and actually raised the blade up to the height I needed through it while it was running. This made sure that I had a zero clearance on either side of the blade and the piece would have a smooth transition from one side to the next. One by one, each piece of the frame got a bubble, making sure not to do the front of the piece where the doors would be. Once that was done, I found a scrap piece of pine and cut it down to a quarter by a quarter. This would help give just a little bit more surface to the glue joints. I cut it to just inside the bevel and then glued and tacked it in place. At this point, I started liberally putting glue all over the joints, taking each piece, lining it up, and tacking it in place. For the first time in days, it actually started to look like a box, which was a bit bigger than I expected it to be. And the next morning, I had a box! made out of toothpicks, but it looked like a box, finally. And it was actually pretty strong, even without the panels. I gave all the joints a quick sand and then moved on to the panels. Each panel was glued and then a seal of caulking put around it. In a 3D printer, the number one thing you want is consistent temperature. So any air leaks coming through these panels was not gonna be acceptable. The base of the box was done in a similar way cutting a panel to fit inside, but this time I put a decorative piece of pine all the way around. And then on the bottom, to make up the difference between the panel and the frame, I got some scrap material that was the same thickness and tacked and glued it to the bottom. This gave us a nice stable base and something we could screw the machine down to. And then what in my mind was going to be a quick lick of paint, well, it took a while, but eventually I had this. At this point, I moved on to putting the doors on. I beveled the inside of the doors just slightly so that they would be able to swing past each other clearly without rubbing at all. And yes, I know I did just finish painting the box, but that's what paint touch-ups are for. And once the hinges were on and the doors were swinging nicely, I touched up any paint that had been cut and moved on to putting all the plexiglass in. These panels were put in just the same as the wooden ones, except this was put in with just caulking, making sure to seal up all the air gaps again. Next was some magnetic clips. I was gonna be putting weather stripping all the way around the door opening, so I wanted to make sure that they were held tight against it. And there we have it, final box, we're ready to go home. My husband was so excited when I brought this home that he kicked his old one to the curb. I barely got any pictures of it, but this is the new one in place. And I told him the final step was his responsibility. So he very happily went off to Thingiverse and found some handles that he wanted. And I took them back to the shop, drilled them out and threaded them so we could put them on the box. Check out some more Woodchip Liz videos here and get some great ideas for cheap material and cool projects. You don't need to spend a fortune, you just need to look at things a little differently. And remember to like and share and subscribe so you never miss a secret. See you next time.